I'd like to welcome you guys to my newest weekly series, Pokemon Throwback Thursday, where every single Thursday morning I post a video covering everything vintage, stuff that's going up, stuff that's going down, and we go over all the big recent auction sales. And we do got to say thanks to our sponsor today, and that is Platinum Protectors. This is another brand new sponsor that I personally reach out to because I absolutely love their products. I have some of their ETB cases and some of their booster box cases. You know, they got top loaders, penny sleeves, they got the nice, thin, cheaper booster box and ETB cases too, which is just great for shipping. You know, especially those more expensive ETBs and booster boxes. But they got stuff for everybody, too. They even got action figure protectors, die cast, Funko Pop, movie box, trading card, and video game protectors. So any collectible protection you need, Platinum Protectors has got you. So definitely check them out. The link is in the description. But all right, let's get started. We are starting off with some XY break cards. Nobody ever talks about the break cards. Honestly, I feel like a lot of people don't really enjoy them. I think they look pretty nice in a binder. You know, when you fill a whole page, pretty solid. And we got some pretty popular Pokemon. Greninja, Lugia, Raichu. So we'll check out a few here. Let's check out the Greninja. These are so cheap. There is a good amount of break cards, though. I have to replace a couple cards that aren't the best condition, but I almost have the set complete. But Greninja's going up a little bit. It was 554. Last sold. You know, we're dealing with a little bit of an older card here. So moderately played $3. Lightly played 529 near mint nine dollars near mint 650 near mint 750. it's kind of crazy that the greninja took the top spot over lugia lugia was the most expensive for the longest time i do enjoy this lugia card some of them really pop with the color so it was 569 up to about 650 last sold 516 for near mint so it looks like it's starting to come down in price a tiny bit 563 uh, let's find a lightly played a dollar 20 wow four dollars four dollars dollar 87 for damage yeah, I just wanted to mention those. Nobody ever talks about them. I don't love them, but I definitely don't hate them. All right, next we got the Reshiram Full Art. Now, this was reprinted for Celebrations. I absolutely love these cards. I just got this card, actually, at the Minnesota Card Show. PSA 10 was $300 in April, up to $500, down to $400, up to $500, back down to $400. Kind of crazy. But for Raw... The card is relatively affordable, especially after the reprint, but you can find it near mint for around $20. So not too bad. Beautiful card from 2011. So very solid. And another one too that I'm looking for, if anybody has this card in near mint condition, probably grade maybe uh, eight. I am interested. Let's see what the last near mint sale was for raw. Let's see here. Raw, $95. Doesn't say condition. Near mint lightly played $100. Uh, 71, 51, 22, 40, 50. Here's another 100 down here. Doesn't say condition. 110 doesn't say condition. Wow. Crazy. But yeah, I really, really want this card raw, especially some of these older cards. These full arts, the texture's beautiful. Like, you gotta get them raw. All right, next, we got the Mega Charizard. And in my opinion, I do not like this card. And here's another reason why I don't like it. They basically have the exact same card in the set. You can barely tell the difference. So this one's way cheaper, same set. The only difference really is obviously, you know, the number and the gold around the edges. That's it. Pretty expensive too. I mean, $2,600 in a PSA 10. Let's check raw. $265. Moderately played 123. Uh, new listing, 225. Trying to find another near mint. 213. Uh, PSA 9 sold for 325 Card's very hard to get in a PSA 10. There's like nothing marked actually as near mint. This card's definitely tough to find in good condition. And then, yeah, they have a same one, but much cheaper. So if you guys have this one, you never know. You might have the more expensive one. You might have looked it up wrong if you didn't look at the numbers. Like I said, they have the numbers down below. But it's just lazy, in my opinion, to give the exact same card with just the tiniest difference. So this card's also going up a little bit. But yeah, this card's way cheaper. Let's see, PSA 9 is only 132. A near mint free description, 48 bucks. Well, read description gets me worried. So the next one is damage for 51. So that ain't right. Let's see if we can find another near mint. 62. So you can get this card for 62 bucks. Like I said, I don't know. I'm not the biggest fan of the arts. I do love Mega Charizard, especially the black version. But still, I thought these could be better. Next, we got the Charizard from XY Evolutions. Coming down in price, the Holofoil was $50, now 44 
Reverse Hollow was 41. Now mid 30s. Wow. Solid card, but we just got so many reprints of this card that, I mean, it makes sense. Uh, I do not mind the card, though, like the hollow print and everything. It looks pretty solid. I do think the new Charizard that we got in the big trading card classic box looks better than this. I'd probably take this over the Celebrations one, honestly, because the Celebration stamp bugs me a little bit. All right, next, an XY Evolutions booster box case. We got a new crazy sale. On 714, sold for 5,796. The day before, sold for $4,500. Super crazy. This is on TCG Player, but absolutely wild. I do not think Evolutions is the best set at all. And it's one of the most printed sets in Pokemon history. I just can't comprehend on why it's so expensive. I mean, I get it. It was kind of hyped up by a lot of Poketubers and stuff during the big boom. But I mean, otherwise, I don't know. I would never pay that much for that set. Next, we got Flash Fire Booster Packs. Look at that. Four of the dollar packs sold for $45, one of each art. Someone sold three blister packs, all different arts, for $65. Someone just sold the regular Charizard XY pack for $65. Bucks. Sleeve Booster for $40. I love buying these. You know, I cannot resist a good vintage Sleeve Booster. And I know XY isn't really that old yet. But Flashfire is a pretty special set. And the reason we're talking about it is because some of the products are starting to go down in price. So the last sale for the Charizard EX box was 300. The sale before that was 400, 410 before that. And then booster boxes, you know, we got a sale here for $5,000 in June. Another one here for $3,700 or best offer. And last but not least, on July 9th, one sold for $2,800. But yeah, I love XY Flashfire. I do have a few sleeve boosters but that's all I have for that set. And some of the cards in the set are absolutely beautiful. I'm just not the biggest fan of those Mega Charizards. All right, next, we got a Team Rocket theme deck sealed. Now, in my opinion, this is one of the best things to get when you're, you know, shopping around for some vintage sealed products when you're first starting out. Very affordable. You know, I'm sure a lot of us open these as kids. I remember opening them, you know, when there weren't any booster packs and I wanted to get that guaranteed hollow you know, I'd buy one of these, but it's starting to go up in price. Now, these are not all recent sales. Like that one's got a sticker on it. That was July 10th. But before that, you know, $100, April 24th, April 28th, 106, May 17th, 103, April 24th, 105, uh, May 24th, 117, 121. And then if you hop over to the recent sales, 185, 140, 145. There are two different versions. You can get two different arts. That's what's cool about it also. And they have these for almost every set for base and Neo. The Neo ones are pretty expensive, but a lot of the base ones are very, very affordable. I love these things. But yeah, definitely went up in price a little bit. I mean, 185 is a pretty crazy sale. I do have one of the Team Rocket ones. I have a Jesse and James. It's not the best condition. The plastic's very nice, but the corners kind of have some dents and stuff. I've had it since probably... I don't know, 2010. I think I traded a few cards for it. Super cheap back then. But I absolutely love these things. If anybody's sitting on a bunch of these in really, really, really good condition, hit me up. I would love to know because I need a few more to complete all the original base and then I'm missing two Neo ones. So, all right, we are checking the PWCC auctions, which is now not PWCC, I guess. It's Fanatics Collect. So I'm guessing Fanatics bought them out. It was very annoying. They made me re-log in. It was a hassle. So we're going to check the last recent sales for English, and we are also going to check the last recent sales for Japanese, trying to have stuff for everybody here. So we got a first edition Shadowless Charizard BGS 9, 16 grand. We got a Pop Series 5 Umbreon Gold Star PSA 9 sold for 8100 we got a basic CGC 10 first edition Alkazam sold for 5160. Beautiful Gengar Skyridge card in a pristine CGC 10 sold for 3960, population one of nine. Next, we got a Pikachu from 2010 Pokemon World Collection Hollow BGS Black Label $3,720. Holy. Next, we got a Mew Gold Star. Love this card. Basic CGC 10, 3,360. And people keep asking me what the basic CGC means. It's CGC has two 10s. They're regular CGC 10, which is technically 
a 9.5 or a 9. The price equivalent is probably close to a 9. And then, of course, the Pristine 10, which is actually gaining a ton of momentum. Like, go look up a 151 Charizard EX in a PSA 10, sells for like 350 In a Pristine, it sells for like $800 now. So if your cards are absolutely perfectly mint and you're not maybe doing it for your personal collection, you know, maybe think about grading with CGC and getting those pristine 10s. And I've seen a video where somebody graded, I think the Snorlax promo, and they graded like, I don't know, a thousand of them from CGC. And the stack of pristine 10s was pretty big to where I know if they would have did that at Beckett, there'd be maybe a couple black labels. I swear. Beckett is still the toughest when you're dealing with that, you know, perfect 10. Kind of shocked at how many pristine 10s they got, because it was a pretty big stack. I want to say it was like 100 pristine 10s, and then, you know, 900 regular 10s, whatever it was, and probably some 9s and stuff like that. But yeah, the CGC pristine 10s are definitely growing. All right, back to the list. We got a Beckett 7, Crystal Charizard sold for 3200 We got a Rayquaza Gold Star BGS 6 sold for 2640 Gyarados Gold Star, BGS 9, 25, 20. We got a PSA 9, Gold Star Pikachu, 2310. And people say, you know, Vintage isn't that popular, doesn't sell very much. I mean, that's all this is on PWCC right now, or Fanatics. You know, you'll get the occasional Moonbrion and Latios, but all the high dollar cars are still Vintage. And we do got a Latios here, little cheap on that one, $1,980 for a PSA 10. That's a little low. It was selling for like 2300 Next, we got a, is that a Beckett signature? Wow, I don't think I've ever seen one of those before. Kind of crazy. Sold for 1950 So it looks like the grade of the card was an 8. And it's signed by Arita with a little signature. Kind of cool. Looks different. Uh, first edition, Dragonite. Basic CGC 10, $1,680. Almost the same price as the Beckett 7.5. Gold Star Charizard. Beautiful. Getting into some Neo Revelation. We got the Magneton here. First edition. PSA 10 sold for $1,620. And we got the Porygon 2. First edition. PSA 10. I actually have this card in a PSA 10. In first edition Hollow. I love Porygon and Porygon 2. I don't know why. I just enjoy them. Next, we got the Shining Charizard Unlimited. PSA 9, 1380 we got a Rayquaza EX, sold for $1,380. We got a basic CGC base set to Charizard, sold for $1,290. We got a PSA 9 First Edition Shiny Mewtwo, sold for $1,290. We got a Gold Star Kyogre, PSA 9, $1,290. And a Gold Star Groudon, PSA 9, $1,260. And to end it off, we got a basic CGC 10 First Edition Sabrina's Gengar, sold for $1,230. Awesome, let's hop to some Japanese. All right, we got a Umbreon Prime card here, but this is a special rank prize Prime Umbreon. Wow, hard to say. Population one of one, back at 9.5. Just one graded. 20 grand. Crazy. Look at this one, a 2009 Pokemon Japanese design contest promo. Korokoro Ichiban Arceus PSA 10 probably butchered that name sold for 20 grand also wow another one 2010 pokemon japanese design promo fan winner illusions aurora psa 10 gem mint sold for 9900 dollars. some crazy japanese cards i will admit japanese does get some very very unique cards next we got a psa 10 charizard top sun blue back sold for nine grand Ooh, we got a Beckett, Black Label, Japanese Rayquaza, Alt Art, sold for $8,400. Next, we got a 1998 Japanese Tamamushi University Prize Magikarp and a BGS-8 sold for $6,600. Next, we got a Pokemon Japanese Creatures Deck Corporate History Pikachu Zekram GX and a PSA-10 sold for $6,300. That's crazy. Next, we got the Rayquaza Pikachu card. In a Gem Min 10 with an auto, sold for six grand. We got a 2000 Shining Magikarp, sold for 5280 in a PSA 10. Another one, 5280. A Japanese Promo Battle Road Hollow Victory or PSA 10, 5280. 
Another one, Pokemon Japanese Design Promo, third grade winner, Illusions, Aurorock, PSA 10, 5160. Another Japanese, Top Sun Greenback, sold for 4920 in a 10. We got a Japanese promo, Tropical Mega Battle, Tropical Wind, BGS, 7.5, sold for 4920 Next, we got a Japanese Creatures deck, History Mew EX, Let's see, Beckett 9.5 sold for 4920 It's just wild. I mean, half these cards you've just never even heard of before. We got a Japanese Gengar in a black label. Sold for 4320 But remember, black labels for Japanese cards aren't quite the same. Yes, they're still absolutely crazy and basically the rarest, but they're much, much easier to get. If you look up like pop reports and stuff like that, there are way more Japanese black labels than there are English. All right, we got a Gold Star Torchic. I do love the gray border on this card. In a PSA 10, sold for 4,200. We got another one of those Pikachu Zekrom cards. And then we got an awesome Eevee card. Love this. Fan Club. Beautiful card. The hollow on this card is awesome. I've seen this card in person, actually. Uh, one of my buddies had it for the longest time. I almost traded for it, but... Didn't end up doing it. Not the biggest Japanese collector, but it's a basic CGC 10. Sold for 3,480. And then we got a Beckett gold label 10. And that sold for 3,480. And that is the Pikachu Gyarados Poncho. I love the Gyarados one. That one is pretty cute. But I'm not the biggest fan of the Poncho cards. I don't know. I just don't really like when they do these exclusive, super hard to get Japanese promo cards and stuff like that. Or these boxes that are tough to get. Because I don't know. I'm just not the biggest fan of stuff like that. But all right, that was today's Throwback Thursday. If you guys do see anything moving up or down in the market, please let me know. It helps out so much, especially vintage. And if you guys could do me a huge favor and hop over to Instagram and please give me a follow there, I would really, really appreciate it. Just know I post something there every single day, whether it's from my personal collection or, you know, a new card that's being teased or some Pokemon news, whatever it is. And then too, you can check out my membership. It's only 99 cents a month. And then of course, make sure you leave a comment I comment back to every single person. You know, I love chit-chatting. It's my favorite thing in the world to do is talk about Pokemon. So definitely hit me up and then make sure you leave a like. Those two help the absolute most. And if you guys want to watch my last What If Wednesday, where if you guys do have any investing or collecting questions or any type of Pokemon questions at all, even questions for me, personal, whatever it is, you can drop them in that What If Wednesday where your question will actually be featured in the video. And one person's question is featured on the thumbnail every single week. So click this video if you want to watch my last one. Otherwise, we'll see you next time.